This video is going to focus on a couple videos that were done by Isaac Watero. I may be pronouncing his name wrong, if so I apologize. In this video I will unbox this bad boy and install not just one, but two AMD Radeon 7s. Only 580X, I got 17 minutes and 48 seconds. With only one Radeon 7, 6 minutes and 3 seconds. Two Radeon 7s, 3 minutes and 14 seconds. Wow, that's impressive. And with all three cards, I got uh, 8 minutes and 52 seconds. So you get worse performance with both the Radeon 7s and the Pro 580X than only with one Radeon 7s. Premiere Pro added dual GPU support back in 2013, but with a twist. If you have dual GPUs installed, Premiere Pro only uses one to render effects on the timeline, but uses both of them when exporting. Unlike DaVinci Resolve that uses as many GPUs as you throw at it. Make sure to subscribe for a 10 reasons why DaVinci Resolve is better than Premiere Pro. Are you sure DaVinci Resolve is better than Premiere Pro, or is your computer defective? You just stated the more graphics cards you have in your computer system, the better the end result will be when using DaVinci Resolve. Prior to that, you stated when you had all three graphics cards in your computer system, it ran worse than if you just had one or two of the Radeon 7 graphics cards installed. In this project, I have the same 4.5K red raw footage from the DaVinci Resolve timeline test video, and there is no problem playing it back at full resolution in Premiere Pro either. But when I add a Lumetri color grade and unsharpened mask, the playback is not usable at all. The CPU goes up to 100% and back down to 50%, and none of my three GPUs works at all. Keep in mind, in your first video, you had three graphics cards when you were benchmarking DaVinci Resolve, and it gave a worse result with the three graphics cards in it. Why are you benchmarking Premiere Pro with three graphics cards installed? What about render types? Is it faster to render with dual Radeon 7s compared to one? This two minute clip took DaVinci Resolve three minutes and 14 seconds to render. And Premiere Pro takes, drumroll please, 16 minutes and 35 seconds. And this is without any noise reduction. Guys, come on, can we just stop using Premiere Pro? Isaac, come on, can you just stop doing horrible benchmarks? You're comparing DaVinci Resolve with the best configuration when doing the benchmarks and then comparing that to Premiere Pro with the worst configuration when doing benchmarks. To add insult to injury, I'm positive you have Premiere Pro set up in software only mode. To make matters worse, in software only mode, Premiere Pro outbenchmarked DaVinci Resolve when DaVinci Resolve was making use of the 580X graphics card. If we put it in one quarter quality, the playback is fine without any frame drops. Remember, DaVinci Resolve could play this exact clip in similar effects and noise reduction, just fine, at full resolution. Premiere Pro can do the same thing as DaVinci Resolve. I want people to be able to see that I'm using a Red One 4.5K sequence. You'll also be able to tell that the video clips themselves are 4.5K Red One R3D video clips as well. I now want to show all the different video filters I have on these clips. As you can tell, there's a Lumetri color effect applied to all of them. On some, there's Sharpen, there's Crop, there's Chroma Key. Most people would say that that's going to really work the GPU quite a lot, and it will, and you'll see that really quick. I am now playing back the Premiere Pro sequence in real time. Everybody knows these video clips had a lot of special effects applied, cropping, chroma key, LUTs applied, sharpen. So it should be working the GPU, and it, it definitely is. My CPU is getting pegged at 100%, but it is not dropping frames. Premiere Pro is always going to try and read like 10, 15 frames in advanced. We can tell by the way the bus is moving, the way her blouse is flowing, that it's not dropping frames at all. If it looks like it's dropping frames once it gets up to YouTube, I can't help that. As you can see, my system can easily scrub the red one 4.5K timeline. Premiere Pro just being Premiere, it takes short of 6 minutes to stabilize a 10 second clip and the result is horrible. Is this a case of Premiere Pro just being Premiere Pro or is it a case of Isaac just simply being Isaac? 
you claim that the end result with image stabilization using Premiere Pro is horrible. I know Final Cut Pro users that use After Effects to do the image stabilization. Premiere Pro and After Effects have the same image stabilization. Everybody knows Premiere Pro struggles at rendering image stabilization video clips. Having said that, why not benchmark systems using chroma key filters? Do some people on YouTube use image stabilization? Of course. Do some people on YouTube use chroma key filters? Of course. But it's not wise to use those two filters because they're used by the minority, not the majority. When doing benchmarks, all we really need are four clips about 15 seconds in length. We need to apply color correction to all of them, apply a simple cross dissolve, and then apply a picture in picture. If your system can play that back in real time, you're good to go. There's no reason to use motion blur, chroma key filters, or image stabilization filters. As I stated, a minority of people will need to use those. If you put your machine into sleep mode, the fans start to throttle up to 100%. Why? I don't know. I think it's great you did your video because it can warn other Apple users that if they do try and install their own graphics cards, issues may arise. I just want to say instead of spending $500 a piece on dual graphics cards, you'd probably be best off just spending $1,000 on one really good graphics card. In other words, why get two RTX 2070s when you could get one RTX 2080 Ti? As you folks can tell, Isaac and I are supposed to do some benchmark collaboration videos. I think they could prove to be really interesting. I don't think he's going to be offended by anything I said in this video because he usually gives my comments a thumbs up or a like, which is nice because I think he does realize that my comments are pretty valid. I think this video is pretty valid as well. I hope we use the method of simple color correction dissolve and picture in picture to do the benchmarks and people will be able to see our CPU and GPU usage. I would also like Isaac to use just one of the AMD graphics cards because it would be a more fair comparison to my RTX 2070. Using clips that are only 15 seconds in length will allow us to play back several different video codecs, Red One, Blackmagic Raw, H.264 in a real short amount of time. I told Isaac that I would give his channel a shout out, and I am going to do that right now. I hope some of my viewers and subscribers will check out his channel, especially if we start doing the benchmark collaboration videos together. I just want to say Isaac's channel is a very small channel, and my channel is a very small channel, but I think between the two of us, we can make an impact on how benchmarks are being done on YouTube.